Hey you guys, so today's video is being sponsored by Fabulosity Hair where you can get some really unique lace braid wigs. The wig that I'm going to show you guys today is the Sheila unit. Before we do that, I'm just going to show you guys how I styled it, which was with a ball wig cap method. Along with that, some of my favorite hairspray, which was the got to be along with the gel. The website is amazing. They have very affordable units and please make sure when checking the website that you click the upper right hand cor corner for your currency exchange. Therefore, that way you'll know exactly the right amount. Shipping and handling does take about three to five days for delivery and the processing time to create any unit is between 10 to 15 days. Along with that, there are also in stock units and you can also customize your unit to the liking of the color that you prefer, along with that, the size of the cap. The units do come with elastic bands, combs, as well as that baby hairs. Make sure to check them out. I'll post all of the information below and you can also use my code which I'll make sure to post in the description box as well. Make sure you follow Fabulosity Hair on their social media handles. Make sure to check out their website. And you can also use the code that I'm going to provide so that way you can save some money. And once again, make sure to check out Fabulosity Hair where you can get the most natural, amazing lace braid wigs there is. So, on that note, enjoy the video and I'll see you guys soon. What's up divas and divos? So you guys, it's Real Talk Wednesday and I figured, you know what? I'm just going to do this real talk while I do my makeup and put my wig back on. Now, granted, I did have on my braid wig from Fabulosity Hair. And this was the second one. This is the Sheila unit that I had on. And excuse me if I look like I'm looking the wrong direction because this is... I'm recording this actually on my iPhone. So, I didn't feel like taking my battery and taking my camera off the tripod or any of that stuff. I got my little ring light behind me, my little desk ring light. And, yeah, so... I did have on the wig from Fabulosity's hair, and that is the new Sheila unit. And um, it's very long. It was 32 inches. That unit I can't sleep in because it's a little bit too long, and when I pin the hair up, it's a kind, it's kind of bulky. So that's the wig that I just don't sleep in. I'll take it off, and, you know, I'll put it on the next day. So I've been doing that. But today I wanted a ponytail, so I'm going to be rocking my other favorite rig, which is RPG Show. But definitely check out Fabulosity's wigs or Fabulosity hair. I will post the information below, you guys. They have some amazing braid wigs, and they look really natural. Super affordable, you guys. So yes, if you want a braid wig, check them out. They have a 10 to 15 day creation process. It is express delivery, so, so it is through DHL. Um, there are different colors to choose from and make sure that when you do choose or you're looking on the website that you go in the upper right hand corner and check and click the US or, or the currency chains depending on where you live so that way you get the right currency so yes you guys we're gonna start this real talk off um it's Wednesday it's really Tuesday you know what I'm saying yeah. but I figured I would just kill two birds with one stone because I wanted to go to Target and get some stuff and pick up my grandson because he started yesterday Monday his first day of pre-k so he was so excited about that I'm so happy for him because he gets to you know reenact with little kids you know get to know the little people you know the little people but <clears throat> yes definitely check them out so I'm just about, I'm just about to put my RPG show wig back on I freaking love this wig to death okay this is my favorite and um i don't really have much to talk about for myself we got some new real talk so we're gonna do those um you know what i'm saying oh i did buy i did go to the 99 cents only store for those of you guys who like what happened to my dollar tree videos i really don't need that much stuff i don't really need anything from the dollar tree except for household cleaning stuff so when i go i just pick up that stuff sometimes i find a little bit of things but i did go to the 99 cents only store and i found these which are really nice they were 2.99 they take batteries you can suction them on any mirror and i bought two of them 
They're really cute. So you can put them on your mirror and do your makeup. But I'm going to suggest this. Do not use this store or batteries like the Dollar Tree batteries. Try to get like good batteries like Energizer or Duracell because I noticed with the Dollar Tree batteries, the light is really bright like for the first day or two. And then after that, even with the low, slow drainage batteries, they get really dim. So you, you want to make sure that you get like some really good batteries when you're using these. Okay. But yeah, I like these, so I'm gonna just keep it on. I'm just gonna put it right here and turn the other one on. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Other than that, I really don't have much to talk about. Um, you know, my relationship is good. I'm happy. Um, been losing some weight, you guys, okay? Just from eating salad and going back to eating healthy again, you know. I gotta um I gotta lose this weight that I put on. Though it wasn't much, it was like 8 pounds, but trust me, it shows in my stomach area. And I'm not sure if that has to do with my surgery or anything. Some people say that it has. The doctor says that it will. It can affect that, your abdomen area. But listen, I'm not really trying to be looking all sloppy. So I'm not trying to look like a supermodel. If I could, trust me, bitch, I would look like a supermodel if I could. Especially if I could afford it. A girl would go get the instant supermodel look you know what i'm saying just a tummy tuck i don't need no booty i got enough for that um i'll take the fat from my stomach and put it in my boobs though for sure so i'm just gonna flat iron excuse me hot comb the baby hairs and the nape down this is a 360 wig um other than that i'm trying to think what i've been up to saturday we went out me mom my husband and the girls mumsy and nay we went to the odyssey aquarium um, it was it was okay. It's the second time I've been not really For an aquarium and the prices that they charge to get in you would think that there was so much more to it But it really wasn't it was you know, I I really wanted him to see it You know, I did take my mom when she came to visit and it was cool But it's cool for I think like a one-time visit It's nothing that you would want to constantly go back to or take more than at least two trips to I don't think like it's something that I would visit again, especially because they don't really have a lot there, you know. They don't have, like, dolphins. It's not like SeaWorld or anything like that. It's just basically aquarium, and they're all in tanks. Um, of course, you know, they do have, like, a little bit of um, exhibits that do not pertain to the aquarium, like a butterfly maze and a laser maze. But it's not something that, you know, I would say you would, you would really want to visit as often i mean if you have little kids they may like it and then again they may not it may seem kind of boring to them especially because they really cannot interact with the animals you know i took my grandson there last year he really wasn't like a big fan of it so he didn't go with us this time it was just me my husband and our daughters you know just like a little family outing because we don't really we do a lot with them but we just wanted to do just something with them and we had a good day. We had a really good time um, out, you know what I'm saying, for the day. We went out to the Chinese buffet, which a bitch loves. And that's about it. I've been working on wigs. I just had a wig sale. Um, there are a few wigs up there still. Um, granted, I will go ahead and post up some more because I definitely have to do some wig cleaning. I don't even know if it's spring cleaning, but, you know... I will keep a wig because I really like it and then I'll only wear it for the video and then I really do have good intentions of wearing it again but then it just sits on my mannequin head in the closet and I don't really wear them I don't wear them you know what I'm saying I have my few that I really do enjoy and this is definitely one of them I think like all the my RPG show wigs are my favorites except for like the bobs I'm not like a huge fan of their bobs only because the density isn't that thick except for the one that I do have which I'm loving but yeah other than that I'm not too big of a fan of their bob wigs but I, I do love these girl so on that note let's get into this real talk you can go ahead and send me an email if you have excuse me <clears throat> me 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 if you have a real talk that you would like me to talk about you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, real talk, so that way if it is a real talk, when I search it up in my email, it'll pop right up. If you want to change the names of the people who you are referring to or talking about in the real talk, then go ahead and let me know. But if you don't, 99.9% .9 
baby daddies that I will change it for you. So, let's get into this real talk, okay? Huh? 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 What? Damn. Damn. Hi, you guys. Hi, April. This is a long one. This is a long one, so I apologize in advance. I have changed the names. I'm already for you. I, I am writing to you about me and my husband. You can call me Desi and him Pablo. Well, my husband Pablo stays out all night on the weekends. I don't see him until a day or two later. And when he does come home, he is disgustingly drunk and high and reeks of cologne. He comes in yelling and talking mad shit to me about how I don't do anything but lay on my ass all day and I need to get up and get a job. Mind you, I'm a tax preparer and we're off this is not the season this is the off season he was the one who said he wants to be he wants me to be home and take care of our kids and the house well april i make sure that the house is clean clothes are washed children are kept kept up dinner is done and hot and ready when he gets off at three in the morning from and and sometimes have just enough energy to please him before finally going to sleep at 5 a.m Pablo gets mad at me because i don't want to fuck all day every damn day he constantly telling me that if I would just be the way he wants me to be, then he would stay home and that I don't have to fuck every day, just every other day, as if I'm not completely drained from being a mother and a housemaid all day. It's same. It's the same. Like, all we do is argue over everything. And he even throws up the fact that it's his money, that he pays for everything, as if when I'm working, it's payday for me. It's cash app me, baby. So wait, as if when I'm working, it's payday for me, it's cash at me, baby. I need money in my, my motherfucking pockets or I need gas. He's always making empty promises to the kids and now it's at a point when he says he's going to do something, it's just like, yeah, all right, and he we walk off. April, I always ask him, how can you be comfortable staying at your homeboy's house all day and all night with them and their family when you have one of your own that you barely are with? That's when... That's when says that's when he says, Well, if you was touching me and making me feel like somebody, then I'll be there. I'll be here instead of in the streets. It's a lot more that's going on, but even just writing you this is draining my energy like he does. April, honestly I'm tired of being hurt and crying because of a manipulative drunken man. Please help, does he? So her email was kinda all over the place. Not all over, but you know, I just had to switch up some of the words. But basically, Desi and Pablo are married with kids. Pablo is a fuck up. I'm going to just say a fuck up because he'll just go to work. He has to go to work late or he comes home late. And basically, Pablo goes out on a Friday and don't come home for like the whole weekend. All he does is stay at his homeboy's house all weekend or he's constantly in the streets. The only time he's home is when he wants to get some pussy it seemed like um or when he does come home from work he's constantly complaining as soon as he gets in he's saying how shit ain't done she needs to get off her ass get a job you know she needs to do some shit you know what i mean it's his money he pays the bills etc etc but when she's working because she's a tax preparer then once she gets paid pablo is like well cash at me some money i need some motherfucking money in my pockets is what he's saying to her Basically, I need gas for my car. You know what I'm saying? And also, you know, she's telling him, she's complaining to him about the issues that they're having. And I get that. And he's saying, well, if you would touch me like you're supposed to and just be the way I want you to be, then I wouldn't be in the streets all day and I wouldn't be at my homeboy's house all the time. If you would just show me some attention and we could have sex at least every other day if you would just be the way that I want you to be. First of all, let me tell you this. Did this nigga say if she would touch him the way he wanted her to and have sex with him the way he wanted her to, then he wouldn't be in the streets all the time? So to me, honestly, to me, that sounds like, well, if I touch you the way you want me to touch you, you won't be in the streets all the time. So is there somebody else that's in the streets touching you and making you feel manly? I mean, because I'm trying to figure this the fuck out. Who the hell tells a woman, you know, if you was to be the way that I wanted you to be, have sex with me every other day or every motherfucking day, and just do what I want you to do, then I wouldn't be in the streets all the time. But the main key to me was this one. If you was to just touch me and fuck 
like how I wanted you to, then I wouldn't be in the streets all the time. And plus, Desi is like, there's more to it. But just from writing me, the email is draining her. Let me tell you, I think the more to it for Desi is the nigga is fucking. And that's just what she don't want to write. Me, personally, if she don't think that, I'm thinking that shit. Because what motherfucker in their right mind is going to say to their woman, well, if you was touching me and fucking me the way I wanted you to, then I wouldn't be in the streets like I am. Now, mind you, he said he's at his homeboy's house, at his homeboy's family. Well, who's who are you fucking? Your homeboys? Is you gay now? I mean, I'm trying to figure this all out. You want her to fuck you the way she you want to be fucked, which is every damn day. And on top of that, if she was to do that, then your fucking ass wouldn't be in the streets all the time. But here's your excuse. Well, since you ain't fucking me like how I want to be fucked every day, I'm going to just hang out and be in the streets all the motherfucking time. So, you getting pussy in the streets? I I'm just trying to figure that out. What I'm trying, what I'm, what I'm feeling is... The nigga Pablo ain't about shit, okay? He young and stupid, and if he ain't young and stupid, he just stupid, okay? And I don't normally call people stupid, but for this one, I'ma just say Pablo is a fucking asshole. He's a drunk, he comes home drunk, he comes home reeking of alcohol, he's high, he smells of cologne all the time when he comes in, and then he complains. Sounds like Pablo's got a girlfriend on the side to me. And they got kids, so all he does is make empty promises of what he's going to do with the kids or get them, and then he don't do shit. He turn around and don't even do shit for the kids. And now everybody in the household is like, mm-hmm, yep, yeah, okay. So nobody believes anything Pablo is telling them. And Desi is tired. She tired of sitting around crying. She tired of being hurt. You know what I'm saying? She tired of it. Let me tell you this much. Honey, I can't I cannot tell you to leave. I cannot tell you to win to be tired. But what I can tell you is this. The nigga is no good. I don't give a fuck if he is Mexican. If his name is Pablo Escobar motherfucking Jesus. The nigga is no good. He ain't about shit. He in the streets fucking bitches. He's not at his homeboy's house. And if he is at his homeboy house, well, honey, his homeboy's got some chicas over there for him. You know what I'm saying? There's some motherfucking chicas over there. And let's let's not forget the fact that she has a job. She works. She takes care of the home. You know what I'm saying? She prepares. She takes care of the kids. And he's not even being man enough to be a father to the children. He's just too busy running in the streets. This is what I would do. I pack my shit up and leave. I wouldn't pack his shit up. I pack my shit up and leave. You know why? Because the nigga's going to only scream, this is my house. I pay them bills. I pay the bills to live there. This is my house. So do him an injustice and fucking pack you and your kid's shit up and go. As long as you stay the fuck around, Pablo or Escobar, or whatever you want to call the motherfucker, whoever this man is, and this goes to all of you guys, as long as you stay around this motherfucker, trust me, he ain't going to change. You know, regardless of if he tells you, or regardless if you change and do what he wants you to do, meaning fuck every day and touch him the way he wants to be touched and do what he wants you to do, he's still going to do what he want to do. That's just his way of manipulating you. Once you go ahead and do all the things that he's requesting of you, do you really think the nigga's going to change? Why should you have to change yourself for somebody else to change and be different to you? If the nigga is a fuck up and you're not, why the fuck should you change and be a fuck up right along with him? I'm sorry, but there's no room for fuck ups in the world. There really isn't. The, the fuck ups are the ones that are normally sometimes in jail, on parole, on probation. You know what I'm saying? There's no room for fuck-ups in the world. I'm just saying. And as a mother with children and just a woman in general, we as women do not have time for fuck-up men. Okay? We don't got time for fuck-up men. If you want to have a fuck-boy or you want a fuck-boy, please don't be a grown-ass woman. And please don't be a grown-ass woman with children. That's number one key. If you're a woman, a grown-ass woman, and you're about your business and you got kids, Please, don't feel the need 
to feel like you have to be in a relationship with somebody because you have children with them. Granted, it is nice to stay in a relationship, especially if you have kids with the person, because who does not want to raise their children with their kid's father? Like, that's an amazing thing. That's a blessing. That's a beautiful thing. However, if your household is in disarray and is dysfunctional and the man that's who's supposed to provide for you and the children is not providing and all he's doing is hanging out in the streets, not coming home and shit like that, then you really need to stop and think about your priorities. The main priority is the children because as long as you allow the kids to continuously see the ways and the actions of their father, then they're going to feel like this is okay. Regardless if they see that, oh, he's lying and he's always promising us things, but he doesn't do it, they're going to feel like that's okay. And then what's going to happen later on down the road is these children are going to develop bad habits, and then they're going to be okay with empty promises. Oh, yeah, Mommy, I'm going to wash the dishes, and then they don't do it. Oh, I'm going to take the garbage out, and they don't do it. They don't do their schoolwork. They just follow in the patterns. Little do you know, the little things that children see, they feed off it. They soak it up like a sponge, and it really don't matter how old they are. Let's just take, for instance, my grandson son he's four now why is a four-year-old going around saying stupid now yeah i just called pablo stupid but i don't ever basically i don't really use the word stupid as much but i do know he did not receive that or get that from me he got it from his mother because i constantly hear her say it. he soaks it up like a sponge certain things that she says he comes back and says it you know what i'm saying this is what i'm talking about you have to realize that children are so impressionable and the habitat, the environment that they live in can be an impression on them, especially if you're not trying to correct it. You know, granted that is their father, but some women, and it's unfortunate, but some women stay in these bad relationships with their husband, their children's father, because they feel like, well, this is my kid's father. I want them to have both parents. And that's great. Who don't want to have both parents? But I'm sorry, when your parents or your one of your parents or fuck up, why would you even bother? Why would you even subject your child to a parent who's nothing but broken promises? To me, that's just a setup for a failure. And then it's also allowing the child to see, like, you know, it's okay to be like this. Mommy's going to pick up the slack. It's okay. Daddy's going to pick up the slack. But mommy's a fuck up. It's not okay. It's definitely not okay. For children to see this and to me it's just a bad environment and it's okay if that's child neglect straight up that's child neglect when children see parents arguing and fighting and things that becomes a form of child neglect okay because of the environment and i'll be the first one to tell you i have been in a bad relationship and i'm not talking about my husband granted my husband was an alcoholic and i did leave him and see what i'm where i'm getting at i left him and i moved to arizona and i lived i've been living out here for six years we got back together two years ago he got himself cleaned up if he wouldn't have done any of that i wouldn't have been in the picture i got tired of the broken promises i got tired of coming in late i got tired of being drunk and hot i got tired of that shit a person gets tired of shit they it's wear and tear on the body it's wear and tear on the soul the mind the heart and after a while I promise you you get numb to the shit and whatever he's telling you or how he's feeling it doesn't even concern you it's not a priority to you anymore and then you start feeling like damn I wish this nigga would stop breathing damn I hate him damn why do you have to come home from work today these are the things that how I used to feel about my own husband okay back in the days Okay, and I'm just being honest with you guys. These are the these are the feelings that I used to feel towards my husband. And he's very aware that he knows this, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing new to him and he understands the fact that I've left and you know what I'm saying? He said, "If I were you, I would have left too." I would have left too. So you see what I'm saying? Sometimes leaving works and sometimes leaving doesn't work, but leaving always works, especially if you're in a bad environment. You know what I'm saying? This is the time for growth, okay? Desi or whatever your name was. I can't remember. I think it was Desi. But this is the time for growth. This is the time when you have to put your foot down and you have to let your children see that you are the grown-up. You are the responsible parent. You are the provider. You are the mature one. It's not making him look stupid. It's not making him look wrong. It's not making him look right. It's not making yourself look right. It's making your choices right. The choices for your kids. You know what I'm saying? This is their future. They don't have to sit around. Why Why would you want to subject your kids to sitting around in a, ho in a household, in an environment that is unpleasant, uncomfortable, unloving, dysfunctional? Children see all of that. And regardless if they say anything to you, 
they see it. And their reactions can be fuck up in school, fuck up with friends, all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Me, personally, Desi, this is just how I feel. I feel like your husband ain't about shit. And I honestly feel like the nigga's probably cheating on you. Because what grown-ass man, what grown-ass man that has a family, okay, sleeps over at their friend's house? Like, I'm sorry, but where do we do that at? This is, we, we're, we're grown-ups. Grown-ups don't have sleepovers. Like, what grown-up you know have sleepovers? You got a family, man. Go home to your motherfucking family. What grown-ass man you know have sleepovers at their friend's house with their friend's family all the time, like constantly? I can understand if maybe he was hanging out and he got drunk and he wasn't able to drive home and he comes back. But now with Pablo, this is like a constant thing. This is like an all-the-time thing for her. And I'm pretty sure... That Desi probably feels the same way that I used to feel. Why is this motherfucker coming home? Damn, why couldn't he just not come back? You feel me? Now, as long as you stay around Desi and allow Pablo's ass to act crazy, okay? Go insane, do what the fuck you want to do, bitch. He gonna stay and he gonna continue to do the shit. If you change and fuck him when he want to get fucked or do whatever he expects you to do, sweetheart. He might be okay for a week or two, or maybe even not. You know what I'm saying? He might show you some bit of attention, or maybe even not. You know what I'm saying? That's just his excuse. That's just his way of saying, I want to mold you. I want to make you the way I want to make you. I want you to do what I want you to do. When I say jump, get ready and jump, bitch. When I say fuck, bitch, open them legs and get ready to fuck, bitch. This is what I'm talking about. He wants you to allow him to do whatever he wants to do which he's already doing, but you're really not allowing him because if you were, you would not be complaining about it. You wouldn't say a damn thing about it. He doesn't want that. He wants you just to allow him to do what he wants to do without any type of repercussions, without any type of say-so. He wants Pablo's way. Pablo's way. That's the way he wants it. Pablo's way. And I'm sorry, sweetheart. In a relationship, and we both grown, and we have children together, we married and shit, it's a family thing. It's a unit. It's not what Pablo wants. It's not what Desi wants. It's not what the kids want. It's what we want as a unity, as a family. Not coming in late. Let me tell y'all, my husband used to do that same shit to me, and I knew where he was at. I would go there, but after a while, that shit get tiring. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he cheated on me too, and that shit got tiring too that one time. I'm not about to be going through no bullshit, but the staying out and and not coming home because he was in the streets making money. That shit got real tiring, and I got tired of complaining about it. I got tired of him coming home drunk. I got tired of saying shit. I got tired of crying. And after a while, I started to say to myself, April, you know what? Don't even worry about it. But I couldn't go on my own word. I couldn't convince myself how I wanted to convince myself. However, Without me even having to convince myself, my mind and my brain convinced me. I got numb. I got tired of it. After a while, a bitch gets tired of it. And you don't have to sit there and convince yourself. You get so fucking tired and numb of the shit that you know what you do? You pack your shit the fuck up and you get the fuck out. Just like what I did. I packed me and my kids shit, all the shit, the house, everything, including my husband's shit. And I got the fuck out. I took my ass and got on the freeway to motherfucking Arizona. And here I am to this day. And am I happy that I made that decision? I'm I'm very happy. You know what I'm saying? Did I love my husband? Of course I loved him when I left. Did I regret my decision? No, I did not regret my decision because I felt like this was the best thing for me. Along with that, it was the best thing for my children. And not only that, but it was the best thing for my mind and spirit. I was a miserable person. And it wasn't that I was always miserable, but when I was around him, I was miserable. And I would, I would just sit there and look at him. I didn't sleep with him. I made him sleep on the couch. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't around him like that. I was barely giving him any attention because I was just so tired and numb with just the shit that he was doing that, you know, it just took over me. And it was kind of like reality has set in and my senses had came back like April. Regardless of how much you love this man, this is not worth your sanity. You know what I'm saying? There's so much more to life than, than just being stuck with someone that's making you unhappy. But at the same time, you still love them. And that's the fight that I had. It was like a really hard 
fight. It wasn't a hard decision for me to leave because, you know, once I make my mind up to do something, I'm going to follow through with it. You know what I'm saying? The only part that kind of hurt me the most was the fact that I left and my son, my eldest son, you know, he stayed behind because he has his own family and I respect that. And also the fact that, yeah, I'm many, many miles away from my own family, meaning my mother and my sister and my father and my brothers, but this is what's best for me. This is what I need to do. And with that being said, it's best for me to just, you know, start over, start a new life for me and my children and do what's best for my children and that's what I did and sometimes as women we don't see that because it's a fear you know there are a lot of women out there that are in abusive situations you know what I'm saying and they don't know or they're scared to leave because they feel like they don't have the financial financial stability to leave they don't you know they may not have a bank account they may not have things that they need to survive but I'm here to tell you that there are so many different organizations that are are that are that are here to help help you as a woman, as a parent, as a mother. They are here to help you. So don't ever feel like because you're in a situation or you're married to someone and you don't have the finances that you're stuck in that situation to to stay. You never have to stay. I wouldn't give a fuck if I had nothing in my pocket and nothing but the clothes on my back. I promise you guys, I've been in that situation before. And like I said, it wasn't with my husband. But I've been in that situation. And you know what? It was a blessing to start over, regardless if I had nothing, because I had nothing when I went into the shelter. I left everything, and I took my kid, and I left, and I went to the shelter. Okay, and granted, I had the clothes on my back and the clothes on my kids' back. And yeah, later on down the line, I was able to retrieve my things, but it, I didn't have money in my pocket like that. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't working. I was on social services, but there were shelters. There were organizations that were there to help. And I'm sorry, but that shit affects your kids, whether you think it does or not. Living in a situation, regardless if it's physical abuse or mental or verbal, that's child neglect. No child should have to sit in a home and be subjected to that shit. Not, alone, not only that, but you as a woman, as a human being, Desi, why would you want to be in a relationship with somebody who puts you on a back burner and don't even think much of you? That nigga don't think of you like that. And I call him a nigga because... That's what the fuck he is. I don't care if he's Mexican, Puerto Rican, white, Chinese. That nigga don't treat you right. He treats you like you second, like you a second citizen, a second class, third class. Bitch, he, he treats you like y'all in a third world country, like it's all about him. Let me tell you something, Pablo. You ain't the only dick out there in the world. You ain't the only man out there in the world. There are a whole lot of fish in the sea. And I guarantee you, Desi, once you leave this motherfucker alone and get your life together and realize that you are so worth it and so are your children, then I promise you, you will feel totally different and you won't feel the need to have to stay around Pablo's ass and take all the bullshit that he's he's pushing out to you. I'm sorry, but in my mind and how I feel about this whole email, I just feel like... Pablo is a liar, and he's definitely a cheater, and I feel like he's got a whole different world out there, a whole different motherfucking life besides Desi and the kids. How you gonna go to work, okay, and then come home from work and then complain about your motherfucking... wife not having a job but she cleans the household she takes care of the kids dinner's already hot and ready for you when you come home at three in the morning okay and then she even stays up with you and has sex with you until five in the morning and then the bitch probably still got to get up at probably like seven or eight and bring the kids to school or whatever she's got to do take care of the household so <laughs> what type of bullshit is that let me tell you something. If you came home at 3 o'clock in the morning, you might can get some cootie from me. You might can get some pussy from me. But I'm not about to take your bullshit. If you come home at 3 in the morning, trust me when I tell you, you're not about to come up in my motherfucking crib bitching and complaining that shit ain't done. Nigga, we sleep around here. 
you should be too. You should just be quiet and take your ass to sleep before you wake up the whole motherfucking household. Who the fuck comes in at 3 o'clock in the motherfucking morning and complains about shit? Like, I'm sorry, but at 3 in the morning coming home from work, nigga, you should be fucking tired. Tired and ready to eat and take your ass to sleep. Or take your ass to sleep and just be too tired to even eat. Let me say this much. I don't give a fuck if it's 6 p.m. and you come home. Don't come home from work. Start complaining about what ain't done or how you feel or ain't, nobody ain't fucking you like that. Because let's keep in mind, it might not be a job where you go to and leave outside the house every day, Desi, because you off right now due to tax um, season. But I don't give a fuck if you fucking shoveled coal, fucking made flowers all day, did hair, walked the motherfucking dogs. It's a job being a mother. And I'd be damned if I'm going to let any motherfucking man come up in my place of dwelling where me and my kids reside to come home to complain about some shit. Nigga, if you want to complain and come home, please don't even bring your fucking whack ass back in here. Okay? I'm just saying. I'm not up for all the hoo-ha bullshit with men. And this is how I feel about it. I've been through enough in my life. Okay? I'm 45 years old, and I've been through enough in my life. I've had relationships. I've got baby fathers, and I've got ex-boyfriends and ex-husband. Uh, ex-husband, who I'm with now. Okay? I'm not about to put up with nobody's shit. Man, woman, child, cat, dog, bird. Let me tell you. I'm not putting up with anybody's shit. If you are rude or just mean and nasty to me as a person, then I'm not dealing with it. I wouldn't give a fuck if I didn't have five cents in my pocket. I'm not about to stay somewhere and be verbally, emotionally, and physically abused by anybody. I don't care if you take care of me. I don't care... If you take care of the kids, you're not really taking care of home. Oh, thanks for the finances, but and let's let's bring back to the finances. Did she say when she start when she works? You know when she's when it's tax season and she works, and she gets a paycheck. Does this nigga fucking tell her to cash app cash app him money because he needs motherfucking not just money. He needs motherfucking money in his pockets and money for gas. Uh, let a motherfucker ask me for money in that tone. Girl, I wish my motherfucking man would ask me for money like that. The thing that I would say, the things that would come out of my motherfucking mouth, okay, he wouldn't even believe. I, I, I promise you. If a motherfucker was to ask me for money the way that he asks you for money, he'll never ask again. After I finish giving him this old good tongue lashing, the nigga will never ask again. He'll think twice. He will think twice and maybe fucking three times before he come and ask me, Hey, babe, can I get a few dollars? You'll never ask me again. I bet you that motherfucker would rather be broke and not and destitute than come and ask a bitch like me. Because I'll read you so motherfucking bad and make yourself feel like shit. You will never ask me. You might not ask the next person for no money neither after I make you feel like shame. How the fuck you going to ask somebody for money and then ask them like that? You got to be out your rabbit ass mind to be asking somebody for money in that type of manner. And on top of that, not even just somebody, but your wife. Are you crazy? This is the problem with men. This is the problem with people. As long as you allow them to do the shit and you take the shit that they give you, they gonna keep doing the shit. That's like, listen, if you let me live with you and you tell me I ain't got to pay for shit and you just buy me shit and give me money all the time and keep telling me I don't have to do shit, trust me, I'm gonna love that shit. You think that I'm gonna be like, oh no, I'm leaving here. I don't wanna be here. Hell yeah. As long as you keep doing that shit, I'm gonna allow you to do that shit. Not saying that that shit is right because it ain't, but I guarantee you, if you tell me, oh girl, April, you you can stay with me for forever. You ain't got to do shit, but just take take everything I buy you and just sit at home. And Man, listen, I'm, I'm going to sit here all motherfucking day and do nothing, okay? As long as you are providing for me and treating me like a motherfucking queen, not a princess, but a queen, then, um, yes, I'm going to just take advantage of the motherfucking opportunity. Not saying that that shit is right, but in the long, <laughs> in the long run, the moral of this whole story is, that's what the fuck Pablo is doing. You ain't telling him, Desi, that the shit is right, but you still there. So that's still the same. You allowing him. As long as you there and as long as you taking his shit, then he's going to continue to do that. 
and I'm going to say this to you. I say this all the time. Life is too short, okay? You have to enjoy it while you can. And, honey, you staying there and in that relationship with him, you ain't enjoying life. You too young. And regardless, if you was in your 50s, you too young. It don't matter how old you are. Life is short. And regardless if you got five or two years or five months left, you need to enjoy that to the utmost, which means don't let no motherfucking ignorant ass, pussy ass nigga disrupt your shit. Okay? Don't let nobody make you miserable, sweetheart. Life is short. Being miserable and being unhappy takes a toll. And it takes your lifespan. Not only that, but and later on down the line, you start to come to your senses and you realize that you wasted so much valuable time on one person trying to fix that one person. Well, now you have to fix your own self. You have to fix what you have done to yourself. Not only do you have to fix your own self, but you have to fix your children. You know what I'm saying? You never know how this can you know, play out for your kids. You don't know how this is interfering with their life. You don't know how this is disrupting them. You don't know what this is doing to your children. Sometimes children don't say things. They're just re their, their, their interactions with us or their, just their reactions or their interactions with, with life and pub and people in general basically can tell you the whole story of how they've been up, how they've been brought up. You know what I'm saying? That's like with me. I've been, I'm, I'm in, I, I've been, Born and raised in the in housing projects all my life. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people say that, oh, because you, you know, they, a lot of people say to me, they don't, they, you can never tell that I was born and raised in the PJs because of the way that I am, the type of person that I am. I did not understand this for the longest because I, I really took it as like an insult, like, so people from the projects are supposed to be ratchet or you know what i'm saying uh, like animals is that how we is that how we're portrayed which is ridiculous because even though i was born and raised in the projects in new york city my mother didn't raise me to be dysfunctional she didn't raise me to be rude she didn't raise me to go outside in the streets and act ratchet and shit like that she didn't raise me to do those things she did raise me to be responsible, to take up and defend for myself, and defend myself, and to do what's right. These are the things that she did raise me for, and I appreciate that. So you know what I'm saying. It has to do with how you were raised, not basically your surroundings. But that that was my surroundings, my mom, and she was able to nurture me and teach me. This is how we live. But Desi, you're not teaching them that. You're just teaching them that it's okay to, to deal with this. It's okay to be let down. It's okay for disappointment. It's okay if your father, husband doesn't come home. It's okay if he comes home drunk all the time. It's okay if he's yelling at me and he's complaining and he doesn't spend time with us. It's okay to be a fuck up. That's what you're teaching them because you're not doing anything about it but sitting there and crying. Now granted... Yes, like I just said, sometimes it's hard for women when they're in relationships because they really don't know what to do. They feel like, oh, this is this is the end of the road for me. I don't have anything. Pablo has all the money. I don't I don't have anywhere to go. He provides the food, the groceries, and whatnot for us. Sweetheart, it's not the end of the road. It's not. But like I said, life is very short. And we as human beings We take life for granted. I feel like we do because of the foolishness and the things that we allow to get to us, like being petty. Now, granted, I, I can be petty too. Don't get it twisted. There are days when I, I have my petty moments, you know what I'm saying? And I just feel like, okay, well, you saying some dumb shit to me on a um, comment? Bitch, I'm going to come for you today because I ain't got shit to do. And I have my moments. Did I say it was right? Nah, it ain't right. But you know what? That's just me being a human being. And this fucking eyebrow's pissing me off. Okay? That's just me being a human being. We all have our petty moments. But I will say this. I have learned from a lot of the mistakes that I have, I have done or I have been put through. I have learned from a lot of shit. And I'm here to tell you, sweetheart, Desi, Pablo's not going to change. This is him, and the only time he's going to change is when he realizes that everything that he had is gone. 
and hopefully when he does change that it's not too late for you but i guarantee you at this moment in time sweetheart he's enjoying his life he's not unhappy he kind of make it when i say he's not unhappy because he's complaining. He's complaining. He's telling you, well, if you were this way or if you were that way, then I wouldn't be this way. So he's trying to kind of like making it a complaint to say that you are the cause of the reason why he is the way he is. No, sweetheart. Pablo is the way he is because this is Pablo. And this is how he wants to be. And this is the life that he chooses to live. And right now he's enjoying it. There's nothing wrong with enjoying your life. It's nothing wrong with that. If you want to be a fuck up, Pablo, and you want to do shit the way you want to do it, you want to spend time with your homeboys, and you want to sleep over the house, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. However, do that shit on your own motherfucking time when you ain't got a family. But since he don't want to do that on his own time and he prefers to do it with y'all, his family, trust me when I tell you. I'm going to make sure that nigga do it on his own time. Meaning a bitch going to pack her and her kids shit the fuck up and we're going to leave. Now, Pablo, you can sleep in the streets. You can hang out. You can fuck whoever you want to fuck and you ain't got to come home and worry about cleaning, cooking, complaining, or none of that shit. You don't have to worry about making up stories and broken promises. You just go ahead, you do you, and you live your motherfucking happy life. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with wanting to stay out all night. There's nothing wrong with wanting to not do anything with your family. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's the life you choose then that's on you. But just keep in mind that when you feel like this, there are repercussions, okay? There are repercussions. And the repercussion, Desi, that you need to kick out to his ass is, I'm leaving. A bitch like me, I wouldn't even tell that nigga I'm leaving. I'm for real. I'll just fucking leave. Me, I'll just pack up my shit and leave. While he at work, I would take as much shit as I could and me and the kids would be out. And I'll tell you what, I wouldn't even go... Anywhere where he would know where to find me, like your mother's house or your family's house, I would go somewhere incognito where this motherfucker would never find me. That way I can get my shit together and he can't lure you back into being with him. Because trust me, when you leave, once you leave and he knows where you're at, if he knows where you're at and you're stupid enough to tell him, and I'm using the word stupid again, but you're naive enough to tell him, then, of course, he's going to woo you. He's going to probably woo you before he even knows where you're at because he's going to probably call you. He's going to probably text you. He's probably going to give, you know, calls to your family. Like, well, if you speak to Desi, can you please tell her I love her? I'll change my ways, et cetera, et cetera. This is what the fuck they do. However, this is the part where you have to be strong and you have to realize, I'm not going to go back. I'm definitely not going to allow him to manipulate me into coming back to the house. No, I've made up my mind, and this is what I'm going to do. When you make up your mind, honey, and you decide that what you want to do is for the best of you and your children, then that's when you're numb. You understand what I'm saying? When you have gotten to that stage where I'm tired of this shit, I'm leaving, then that means you're numb, and you've really put up with enough, and you can't deal with it anymore. But until you're in that stage and and you not and you until you in that stage, then you're just gonna sit there and you're gonna allow him to continuously portray this type of behavior, not only to you, but to your children. And you know what's so crazy about this whole situation? Me, I don't like being ridiculed, I don't like being disrespected, I don't like being humiliated. I damn sure don't like to be taken for a motherfucking joke, okay? So to me, if that was my husband doing that to me, <sighs> bitch, you talk about being mad and angry, I would be so fucking livid because I feel like you trying to play me and ridicule me in front of these kids, okay? Like I said, kids see everything, and you're not about to humiliate me and disgrace me not only to my kids but also in front of my family i'm i guarantee you bitches i guarantee you that pablo is damn sure not hiding any of his fucking behavior 
from Desi's family. I'm pretty sure that Desi has already complained about how her husband acts, either to her own family members or to friends. I'm pretty sure that I am not the only motherfucker that she has sat here and emailed or called or texted or complained about regarding her husband. I promise you. Shit cannot be kept secret all the time. Shit like this, I'm, I guarantee you that Desi has shared these same feelings with not just me, but with somebody that's close enough to her. I guarantee you. And for me to have to tell somebody those things, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's humiliating that my household is like this. That my kids see me as a weak person. And I say this not to humiliate you, Desi. I'm not saying that you are weak. And I'm not saying that you are in any way, shape, or form stupid or anything like that. What I'm saying to you is you are weak, but you're weak for a man. A man that has no feelings, no care, or concern in the world. And if he does have some concern, he probably does because you have children with him and he married you. But the concern and the care that he has is not the fuck enough. Not enough. Because had it been enough, you wouldn't have been fucking emailing me. Okay? So it's time, Desi, to stand on your own two grown women feet. Pull up those granny panties, honey. Pack up your bags and leave. Like I said, life is mad short. It's too short. I am not about to sit around and let a motherfucker make me miserable. Like, for real? Can't do it. And on top of that, humiliate me? Who the fuck husband says to them, Well, if you would fuck me when I wanted to get fucked and touch me that way, I wouldn't be in the streets or spend the night over at my friend's house. So because I don't touch you, your bestie, your, your homeboy's touching you, because Desi, that's what I would have said to him. Yes, I would say, oh, Pablo, so because that I don't touch you and I'm not feeling you and fucking you the way that you want to, that's why you stay at your, your homeboy's house? Because he's touching you, right, and fucking you the way that you want to be fucked, right? That's why, right? Yeah. That's what the fuck I would have said, bitch. Since you want to come at me with some bullshit, nigga, I'm going to come at you with some shit because I'm saying... You just told me that that's the reason why you stay at your homeboy's house. And you always over there because I don't touch you. So, obviously, Juan is, Juan is touching you. Or Roberto. Or fucking Escobar. Eduardo. Miguel. Whoever. That motherfucker's touching you the way you want to be touched with. And, listen, I can't compete with that. Female or male, I'm not about to be competing with nobody else for my own husband. If that's how it is, then trust me. That's how it is, and that's how it can stay. A lot of people feel like this. It's for better or for worse. True, that was an old saying. That was, the, that was the shit that was in the Bible. It probably still is. But I'm sorry. In today's day and age, and many days and ages ago, for better or for worse just ain't keeping me in a motherfucking marriage, okay? Because that shit, a motherfucker can make it worse. Now, when they say for better or for worse, that don't mean, like, for better or for worse. That mean if they sickly and shit like that. That don't mean to me. That shit don't mean for better or for worse. Well, if the nigga is cheating on me, I'ma just still stay with him because it's for worse. Bitch, that shit is the worstest. And that ain't even a word. Okay? That nigga made it the worst. You cannot possibly tell me that I should stay with somebody who made it worse. And I'm making it better, but he just making it worse. Why the fuck would I want to stay with him? I could care less if we marry. Being married to somebody is not like an obligation. It ain't like a reward or anything like that. It's a commitment that y'all both did to, together. And if you can't uphold that commitment, then nigga, maybe it's time for me to uphold a commitment to myself. Which is carrying on, going about my business, and getting my shit together. I guarantee you, Desi, if you leave this man... You are going to, for one, seek full-time employment, not just during the season of tax season, because you do need your own money. As a woman, we do not want to depend on a man. And unfortunately, some women may feel like, well, that's my husband, and I'm going to depend on me. He should provide for me. True indeed. Your husband should provide for you. He should provide for you and your family, your children. True indeed. But also, we have to realize, women, that in this day and age, it ain't always like that. And not only that, but you never know what can happen to your man who has the job while you sitting at home doing nothing but 
household work. And that's something. Don't get it twisted. That is something. But let's make a name for ourselves as women, okay? It's great to be a housewife and take care of the children. But let's just keep in mind that your husband may not return from work. These, This may be because he just don't want to return. You know, he decided he ain't coming home. Or this may be because unfortunate circumstances your husband may not be returning he could have got arrested the nigga could go to jail he could have been killed he could have had amnesia who knows it's all type of things you know what i'm saying but i feel like this as women we need to have our own money we can't rely on a man to tell us oh yeah i'm gonna take care of you because i'm your husband because even though they say this just like desi's man said he want her to be a housewife he want her to stay home and take the care of the children in the household and this is what she did for him and then look what he does in return he tells her she needs to get off of her ass this is his money he pays the bills if she was doing this and that he wouldn't do this and that like okay so see what i'm saying when you don't have your own money this is the type of shit that you have to go through so granted it's great to be a housewife but let me tell you something if you are a housewife do something for yourself do something for your children meaning get you a little part-time job have a side hustle do something P put away some money because i guarantee you you never want to feel like this person owns you this person has a say so of everything you got to ask this person if you can go out and buy something you got to ask this person if you can go and get some new panties or something you got to ask this person if you can go ahead and buy some household goods i know me i don't like asking nobody for shit you know why because i do not like being told no that's my one thing and granted i have a husband and he's always done stuff for me i still like to have my own money i want my own money because i don't want anybody telling me or saying to me well i did this for you and i did that for you i don't i don't need that okay and not only that even if you were to say that to me how about one day i ask you yo you got twenty dollars i could borrow oh, i ain't got it right now that's the type of shit i don't like to hear granted you might not really have it at the moment but trust me when i tell you do you really think i want to hear about oh I ain't got it right now. I start feeling embarrassed even for asking. And to avoid all of that, listen, I got my own motherfucking money. I don't got to ask you for shit. You know what I'm saying? If we go out, I got my own money. I don't got to stand there and wait for you to pay for anything for me. I don't got to ask you, can you buy this for me? You know what I'm saying? I'm not a big, I'm not a child. I don't need to ask you for permission for an outfit or to go out and buy groceries. I'm not a child. I'm a grown ass woman. So I don't need anybody else's money. Granted, when we are a couple, we live together, we're married, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, we need to share the responsibilities together, okay? And that's just me. I don't I don't want to go out all the time and you have to pay for shit. I need, to, I need for you to see, like, look, nigga, I got my own shit. I got my own motherfucking money. I don't need you to do shit for me. Granted, I appreciate the shit that you do for me. I ain't, I'm, am I grateful? I don't know if I could say the word grateful, but I appreciate the shit, you know what I'm saying? However, at the end of the day, a bitch got her own account, okay? So if I feel like I don't want to be bothered with you, or I don't want to put up with your bullshit, then I don't have to because I got my own shit. This is what I'm talking about. As women, we need to be de dependent, self-sufficient, okay? We need to have to do things on our own. Now, granted, when I moved here, it was just me and my kids. There were so many things that I had to learn to do on my own, like change a motherfucking tire. I mean, I didn't learn it on my own. My husband did teach me these things. But, you know, I changed one for the first time on my own. I freaking changed my own headlights in my car. Not just the headlight, but the whole outside casing of the headlight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to take the car front part apart. And put the headlights in. I had to watch a video. I did this on my own. I learned how to put the right amount of air in my tires. Change my oil. I learned how to do a lot of shit for my own. On my own. Being a single woman. Okay? Because, trust me. When you don't know how to do these things. And you don't have the skill set or the knowledge. This is where men take advantage of you. And this is where they have the audacity to say. Well, it's my money. I pay the bills. I do this and do that. I don't know about y'all bitches, but I really don't like hearing that shit at all. And if a motherfucker say that to me, I guarantee you, I probably get real angry. Real motherfucking angry, okay? It's good, you know, the feeling, it's a good feeling, basically, to have to, to be able to tell a motherfucker, I'm good, I got it, I can do it on my own. 
You know what I'm saying? Not saying that you bragging to your husband or telling him that you don't need him, but it's a good feeling in general to be able to say to anybody, man or female, I'm good. I could do this on my own. I got this. I don't need your assistance. I don't need the headache from you. And like I said, Desi, until you are able to teach your, your kids that being a grown-up is being dependent and taking care of grown-up things and doing grown things, they're not going to see that. And until you decide to get up and leave this motherfucker alone, he's not going to change. He's not going to be your, what you want him to be because you, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's not going to be the Pablo that you want him to be if you change. Why change who you are for somebody else when all they're doing is negative shit? Like, that's like me saying, you know what? My husband's not an alcoholic anymore, but let's just say he was or back then. That's just me saying, you know what? I'm going to just allow him to be a drunk and... I'm going to just allow him to crash the cars, come in here and start shit, and I'm just going to deal with it. You think that he's going to change? You think that my husband would change and just say, well, you know what? Because April said that because April's doing this and she's not complaining anymore, I'm going to just stop drinking like that. Nah, bitch, he going to do it even more. That's like you. Oh, it's okay, Pablo. We're going to fuck every day now. And I'm going to give it to you like you want it. And then Pablo's going to be like, oh, now that I got this bitch right where I want her, I'm really going to do some fuck shit. Now, he's going to do this shit real blatant, real bold, non-filtered. This is what I'm talking about. Okay? So, see? There's no win-win. The only win-win to this situation, Desi, is for you, my dear, to do what you need to do for yourself and your children. Which is get off your ass, like your husband says, and do something about it, like your husband says. But take his advice and use it against him. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, that's how I would feel. You guys could let me know your feelings on it. You know what I mean? But yes, you guys. Look, I'm almost done. That was the real talk for today because, look, it's been 51 minutes, honeys. I don't really want to keep y'all that motherfucking long. But give Desi some advice. Let her know what would you do. You want to see the finished look? Okay, listen. I'm going to go finish this look, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to show you guys how it look and everything. You guys have seen me put on makeup before. I'm not doing anything special. I just want to go to the store. I want to go pick up my grandson from school. Ooh, his little pre-K. Oh, my God. Yes. And I wanted to tell Desi, sweetheart, listen, it's not the end of the motherfucking world, okay? It really, really isn't. You know what I'm saying? But as long as you keep yourself in that environment, it's going to feel like it's the end of the world. It's going to feel like your world is caving. It's going to feel like he's not going to respect you. And he's not respecting you. He's not only not respecting you, bitch. He's not respecting the kids. Hello. I'd be damned if the motherfucker ever disrespect my kids because that's what the fuck it is. You disrespect my kids and not come home and, and lie to them and tell them you're going to buy them this and do this and do that for them and then tell them that shit and have my kids sitting around waiting for that shit i guarantee you i'm blasting you as that right there is fucking rules and room for me to fucking discard you discard you i know that you can't discard a human being and then again you can but tell my kids some shit over and over again you got a couple times to keep breaking promises and hurting my kids feelings do that shit to me i guarantee you i'm discarding your ass like the fucking yesterday's fucking trash you going out i'm putting you in the incinerator honey you gonna burn with the trash trust me when i tell you you will never have another opportunity to fuck me and my kids over that shit will be dead ass wrong will not be happening with me no thank you not happening okay that's that's one thing. It's one thing a lot of me, but to a lot of my children and they keep breaking promises to them. That hurt the kids heart like that shit making me mad just thinking about the shit like what fucking grown ass man will lie to their own children? I mean, yeah, granted they there are them. They are them. Okay? There are those. And tell them, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna take you there. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then he don't do a motherfucking thing. Now you got the kids sitting around looking looking like, looking like at you like you stupid, Pablo. 
You know what I'm saying? The kids sitting around looking at Pablo like he's stupid. Oh, and also they looking at Desi, their mother, like she's stupid too. Only because she keeps sitting there and ain't, she ain't doing nothing about it. You ain't got to do nothing physically about it, honey. But what you do need to do physically about it is pack your shit the fuck up with your children and take them elsewhere. Let me tell you, it's hard being a single mother and then it's not hard. But I, this is when it gets hard. When you allow fuck boys like Pablo to constantly keep fucking you over and your children over. That's when it get motherfucking hard. As long as you let a fuck boy be in your life, then a fuck boy is going to be what? A fuck boy. He just going to be a motherfucking fuck. Fuck boy. That's the name in itself. Who wants to be with a fuck boy? Okay? Come on, man. It's one thing to lie to me, your your wife, your whatever you want to call it. But when you lie to our kids and you constantly promising them shit, that shit is not cool. It's not cool. And as a woman, you should not even be allowing that shit. So if I were you, Desi, I would get off my ass like my husband said and do some shit the fuck about it. For real. Just thinking about that just pisses me off. Because listen, for one, I have five children, all right? And with five children, y'all already know I have four kids' fathers, all right? My husband is the one who I have two of them with i could have had four kids with him but you know due to circumstances of miscarriages was it four five excuse me it was five it was actually five could have had five you know what i'm saying i had two miscarriages and when was that i was 37 at the time so those were six months apart and also not knowingly last year due to my fibroids i didn't even know until i went to the doctor for a checkup okay and my endometrius that I had. I didn't even know. So that's five kids later, all right? And we are together. I have four four baby fathers. Do you really think that I sat around and allowed them to put um to lie and disrespect me or my children? If I did, then I would only have one kid with multiple uh, excuse me, I would only have one baby father with multiple children. I didn't allow that shit. A lot of times people say, damn, you got five kids with four different fathers. Dang. So fucking what? Yep, I got four baby daddies. That's right. I sure the motherfucking do. And I guarantee you this watch. I got that many because I ain't about to be putting up with nobody's shit. I don't give a damn if you my father, my baby father, my husband, whatever. You be disrespectful. You keep putting up with shit. All right? You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and be disrespectful and put up with shit and allow the man to do what the fuck they want to do because you got children with them. They just going to keep doing the shit. Just because you got kids with somebody does not make it right for you to have to stay in a relationship when they verbally, physically, and emotionally abusing you. That's the worst type of abuse is emotional abuse. To make you feel lesser than a person. To make you feel less than. To make you feel like you not important. To make not only you feel not important, but also to make your children feel not important. That's like the worst feeling in the world. Okay? You know what I'm saying? That's degrading. And as a human being not just not a, as a woman but as a human being i refuse to allow anybody to make me feel less than a person or my children so desi think about what the fuck i'm saying if you continuously sit there and allow pablo to go ahead and act crazy and whatever the fucking word is in fucking spanish crazy i forgot um i just forgot just that fast that's because I'm getting old. You know what I'm saying? I was about to say um, El Cucaracha, but that's not it. But you know what I'm saying? I forgot real quick. So y'all know what the word is. Put it down below for me. Because then I'll be like, oh, yes, that's what it is. Because how, you know how you be just, for, anyway, listen, like I said, you're going to be fucking crazy if you sit there and keep allowing Pablo Escobar to keep acting like a motherfucking El Nino. Did that sound good? I don't know. Either way. Desi, get off your ass and do something about it. Okay? And on that note, bitches, I'm going to go finish my makeup real quick because it's almost done. Like I told y'all, I wasn't doing shit. I'm not going nowhere. Well, I'm going to Target. I want to pick up my grandson. Other than that, I'm a good girl. I'm good. Yes. Just a little concealer, honeys. Nothing too dramatic. Look. I just want to look cute when my husband come home. And I got to cook dinner. Oh, but see, I'm not a Desi. You're not about to come in here and complain to me about a motherfucking thing. Because there are lots of days when I don't cook. Out of seven days out of the week, it's probably like three days that I cook. I have work to do. Just like him, I have a job. And that is taking care of this house, getting my videos, making my wigs and stuff. That's my job. And he respects that. You know what I'm saying? He don't come in complaining or nothing like that. But I'm going to complain today because I'm hungry. And I took out these steaks. And I'm about to make me some nice roasted or, yeah, roasted. I don't know if that's the right word. But either way, I'm going to make some good ass steak. 
So I will come back with the finished look for you guys, okay? All right, you guys, this is done. Look, look, I told y'all I wouldn't, I, listen, I wasn't going nowhere but to Target and pick up my grandson. I just put it in a ponytail, okay? That's it. It's hot. I don't, I'm not trying to look all fancy, you know what I'm saying? But this is a whole lot better from what I was looking like, bitch, okay? Y'all, this is a whole lot better, bitch, okay? But, um, yeah, so let Desi know. Pablo, you can kick rocks, okay? I love you guys. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Ooh, make sure you check out my braid wig video that I posted up yesterday, okay? It's a new braid wig. Make sure you check it out. Was I looking in the opposite direction the whole time? Like, I'm trying to figure this all the fuck out.